breakfast. A Salvadorian magpie, a bird supposedly found in Jamaica. Sounds pretty believable, but after nearly 10 years on Wikipedia, its completely fictional page was finally deleted. The free internet will tell you almost anything, but how much of it is true? US skeptic activist Susan Gerbeck is working around the clock to help remove and correct the dodgy details on websites like Wikipedia. And she's in Aotearoa at the moment to talk about it at the New Zealand Skeptics Conference. Susan joins us now. Susan, welcome in on your whistle stop tour going oh, down yeah. the country before really the conference in Dunedin. Yeah. I've got to ask first off, how did you become a lifelong skeptic? Oh, it, that's a boring story. I'm just a regular person that just, I don't like to see people preyed upon. I think that it's, it's, it's best to know what's true. And um, it's, we're more consumer protection people. That's the way I kind of look at it. Trying to make sure people get the best value for their money. Websites like Wikipedia mm -hmm. can be incredibly useful mm -hmm. and they do for the most part, I think, I've never delved into the depths of Wikipedia, tell you something that is reasonably accurate or credited to a source. So how much of that should be believed? Well, we tell people to start with the, the citations at the bottom. Never ever assume that the Wikipedia page is in great shape. Only a small for portion of them are probably in very bad shape with misinformation. So don't worry about it too much. It's a great place to start. It's a nice overview of what the topic is of the person you're trying to learn about. Go to the citations at the very bottom of the page and learn more from there. And then maybe go to the talk page, which is up on the upper right-hand corner. There's a little tab called talk. And you can check that out and it'll tell you what the what the editors are talking about and the conversation they're having. It's now I'm curious, we gave a couple of examples, the Salvador in Magpie, for example. Now, I don't imagine that got too much attention, but say David Beckham's page, where he was a Chinese goalkeeper at one point, apparently, <laughs> that would have garnered quite a bit of mm -hmm. people thinking, is that true? And so do you monitor, you can't monitor everything. There's just an infinite number of pages. Do you focus on the really big topics or are you seeking out those ones where it's much easier to mislead someone over a bird on a tropical island that we may never even be able to tell if it's true? Well, so what I do is I run a team and that's what's unique about the project I have, the Gorilla Skeptics on Wikipedia. We are a team of people and I train them to become wonderful editors following all the rules of Wikipedia. We focus on science, scientific skepticism, claims of the paranormal, and people of science and so birds would fall in there but David Beckman wouldn't fall in there at all but we spent a lot of time during the pandemic focusing on anything that do with vaccinations because the misinformation that's, that's waiting in really, deep <laughs> oh my gosh yeah so that's where we spent a lot of our time but we've worked on pages on um, UFOs and spontaneous human combustion and all kinds of different uh, topics that are pseudoscience or, or misinformation um, heavy but we do work on pages of birds and other science topics that interest our editors because I have a team of about a hundred people and they work on whatever they feel like we did the Christchurch Christchurch Botanical Garden page just because was there fake information no no okay. but it <laughs> didn't have enough photographs on it wasn't really okay. filled out we're really interested in just improving all Wikipedia pages we can in the science scientific skepticism area and in all languages possible. Now, some of those you'd think, particularly with the news cycle on vaccinations, it would be reasonably easy to go and check things that were in a page. But I'm wondering when it comes to topics like paranormal, right. you are wading in deep there, right? Well, it's fun. A lot of people have expertise in the areas. We've improved the, rewritten the Wikipedia page for haunted house, spirit photography, all kinds of different things. As I say, each of my editors has their own focus of something that they're very interested in. It's their more their expertise, their area. Some people like the science, the pure science pages. Some people like the natural pages. It's different. Susan, people sometimes say that if you want to know how to make your house safe from a burglary, you ask the burglar how to do it. And I'm wondering, <laughs> without giving us a tutorial, mm -hmm. do you go and find people who know how to make misinformation and turn it back around on them? Or how easy is it to mislead people on Wikipedia pages? Um, well, we try to take off the misinformation. It, the rules of Wikipedia are quite skeptical. You know, you have to have a citation and the citation that you use is quite um, extensive. We can't just use any blog or anything of that sort. So um, I don't really think we have a lot of problem trying to, you just take it off. We don't, we don't argue with it. It's, it's either misinformation or it's not. A lot of misinformation we will actually leave on because we want to refute it. We'll say, this is what is said in this area 
this is the answer to it. So it's not always clear cut that what you're reading, it might be a disagreement it's, with opposing information. Right, but it's clearly listed that way. Yeah. So yeah, so we'll, we'll have like on a haunted house page, we'll say, this is what the claim is. Here is what the evidence is, according to these experts. What's your focus this week then at the conference? Oh my gosh, just staying awake and having a great time meeting people. But as far as Wikipedia goes, Oh, there's so many interesting things. The The conference itself is gonna have a whole range of people that are there. We have Melody Treasure King, who's um, a um, science communicator. She's gonna talk a lot about misinformation and that should be fascinating. And there's gonna be a large range of topics that are, are, are gonna be done with the different speakers that are there. Um, I welcome anybody who is interested to come to the conference. There's still tickets available. You have to get to Dunedin. Um, uh, the website, I believe, is um, it's conference.skeptics, with a K, dot NZ, NZ. I'm sorry. <laughs> do say that. I will I'll get to a point where I can say that. But, you know, we have a lot of interesting things that are there. The New Zealand Skeptics is a group that I've worked with for a while. They're not somebody I'm a member of because, obviously, I'm in California. But they have this hundred thousand dollar challenge. I re I just re I just understood that they they challenge people who have claimed to have paranormal powers. They have all kinds of different psychics. Susan, I'm sorry I didn't get to the challenge earlier in our interview. But I, <laughs> if people can get to the conference, seeing is believing. Thank you very much yes, for joining us this much. morning.